Energy matters are hot kick, so we begin with that. The government is yet to fully settle electricity subsidies granted as COVID-19 relief to the electricity company of Ghana. That's according to a report by the power distribution firm submitted to the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission for consideration to increase tariffs. Charles Nixon-Yabua has more. ECG, however, expects the government to continue to honor its debt obligations to keep the company afloat. It therefore expressed worry that subsidies expected to be paid by the government on behalf of customers are always in arrears, thereby negatively affecting the financial health of the company. Government indebtedness to ECG in the last few years had gone down to a little above 3 billion cities. The components of government bills are ministries, departments and agencies, Ghana Water Company Limited, subsidies, street light shortfall, and utility relief granted to all customers from July 2016 to June 2019 and COVID-19 relief. However, between 2019 and 2021, government has paid ECG almost 17 billion cities as its indebtedness. The various government payments, the report said, were reconciled with stakeholders in the electricity value chain and applied to reduce government indebtedness. Importantly, the total amount paid by government under this arrangement was more than government indebtedness. And as you know, uh, utility companies are asking for an increment in tariffs. Very soon I'll be speaking with the chief executive of the Association of Ghana Industries. But first, reaction from small business operators, especially those in the food business, they are having to grapple with high cost of fuel and food items. Now they have to think about water and electricity. Joining me is Harrison Mati, CEO of 1115 Restaurant and Reginald Alotepapo, CEO of Regis Juice Bar. Great to have you both on the program. I don't know whether it is right to ask how you guys are coping, but what are the experiences you have to share so far? I'll begin with you, Harrison. Hi, good afternoon, Daryl, and good afternoon to all your listeners in the US. I mean, we are barely surviving. If, if, if that's even something that like, it's, it's actually happening. Yeah, we are barely, we are just hanging in. Prices just keep going up. I mean, you mentioned a few fuel, mentioned oil. Everything we use as uh, people in the food industry, prices just keep shooting up. Now we have to deal with uh, water tariffs going up as well. Currently, I do about 600 cities for water every month for one of the branches. So imagine that goes up by the percentage they are proposing, how much should we pay in. So there's so much that we, 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 we put in and the returns, I mean, I've really dwindled. You can't, you can't constantly keep increasing your food price. I keep saying that every day. I mean, a watch sell up by the road can reduce what they give you for your four cities or five cities. And you realize that five cities give me enough for you. But you, someone who runs a restaurant, it's really hard to actually reduce your portion just because prices have changed. So over a period of time, if I look at when the time we, we increase our prices in favorites now, our margins keep dropping. Mm. Uh, if we're doing about 20, 23% profit margin, currently I'll see we are probably hanging around 12 to 15%. And it could just get worse. And uh, Reginald, I've been to your, your factory before. You use a lot of electricity and you use a lot of water too. Uh, how is your yeah. business going to be impacted if uh, utility tariffs are adjusted upwards? Good afternoon, Daryl, and good afternoon to everyone listening. Um, it's going to be very difficult. I mean, it's, it's not news. Everyone knows what, what, um, what impact that fuel, fuel um, increases have had on, on, on business. And I must say, we are really struggling. Um, I'm, I'm really hoping that the government can do something to... Um, to bail us out because it's really bad. Profit margins right now, I don't even want to think about it. I just want to continue working. It's really discouraging. And I don't know how we are expecting um, people to get into entrepreneurship when these are some of the challenges that we are coming to meet. To be honest, if you don't have the heart to work and the dedication to continue working, don't even try entrepreneurship right now. I'll, I'll say it's not even worth it. It's not worth it. Just I don't know. I don't know. I'm afraid. It's crazy. If electricity and water goes up again, <laughs> I profit margin. We can't even talk about profit margin. We can't even talk about let's, let's just talk about our work, not profit margin. Wow, uh, that's not encouraging wow. for anybody who wants to start a business, but that is the reality on the ground. And inflation doesn't help, does it? 
uh, because cost of food items are going up on the market. You deal with foods. Uh, Harrison does a lot of cooking, so he goes to the market and he knows just how much prices are going up. Uh, t tell us your experience once again when it comes to uh, shopping for the items that you need for your food juice business. Yeah, there's been about a 50% increase in price of foods. Um, and to add the transportation, that's gone up by almost double. That's like almost 100%. So we've had to increase the, the, what we are currently, our quantities. We've had to almost double what we are doing, which means using more electricity, using more power for the freezers, and they'll have to stay on for a longer time. So we've had to even lay off a few workers because something must give. And although we are producing more and doing more, we, we, we have to sacrifice with, with some workers. I, I even had to take a pay cut um, earlier. So, I don't know. <laughs> okay, and, and Harrison, uh, yesterday we ran a story about, for instance, to, the price of tomatoes going up uh, so high because of a, of a shortage uh, in town. How does that also impact on your pricing for customers? And do they understand, really? Uh, and so, I, let me give you a typical example. I had a customer complain about uh, the portion of salad we gave him and that it wasn't as much as he usually gets when he comes around. And that he actually wanted extra tomatoes, like more than just one extra tomatoes to his order. I had to explain to him that you are probably going to get like four pieces of tomatoes for 10 cities. And I mean, if you're asking for more tomatoes, you should pay for it. Hmm. He wasn't willing to because he's comparing what he's getting today to what he got two or three months ago. It's really, really hard. I mean, tomatoes, the onion, I mean, not onion is conceded. Talk about chicken. Uh, I mean, price of chicken keeps changing almost every time. Now you're getting a box of chicken like 195. And we were buying around 170, there about, it's 195. And there are this, like, like she said, I mean, like Reginald said, we are just hanging in. I mean, the motivation to, 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 to be an entrepreneur, I don't think it's even about making the money. It's just because you have a passion to do it. And you want to target other people along paid few jobs here. I also have I've taken a pay cut. I've laid out more than half of the staff that we had. We I'm actually changing the model that I am running. I'm not going to run anything as big as I drink another again. I'm just going to do roadside food joints, two, three people come from one place and distribute to all the other branches because if you want to run the same model we're running, we'll run dry by the end of the year. And if the government doesn't come in with any still not support for us, so we are dead and gone. And so that's, that's your strategy to stay in business, Harrison. I'd I like to hear from Reginald. Uh, any strategies? Yeah, as I said, I think um, the only way currently for me to survive in my industry is to produce more. Um, eventually, I'm able to get um, the prices of the food to come down if I'm buying more. So I just have to keep buying more and more and more. Whilst working with like a smaller staff, but I think it's, 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 I've, I've been doing this for about five years now and I don't see myself giving up. I can just only keep going. So we'll do it and then I guess we'll hope and pray that um, things change, things change soon. As, as we all know, like the introduction of the e-levy has also taken, it's going to take um, 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 a bit of our profits off. But we, we, we if, if the government says this, are interested to pay, then we'll pay. And we'll hope that the funds will go into um, projects and um, things that will benefit us all. Thank you both. Uh, Reginald Tepakpo, the CEO of Regis Juice Bar, and uh, Harrison Mati, who is CEO of 1115 Restaurant. I uh, appreciate your time with us this afternoon on the marketplace, and thanks for sharing your experiences. While if government fails to subsidize uh, electricity tariffs, consumers could pay more from August 2022. Now, with the electricity company of Ghana demanding a 148% increase in tariff, a proposal from the power dispute uh, submitted to the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission warns the adjustment to cover the period 2019 and 2022. And it's not just the ECG asking for an increment. The Ghana Water Company Limited is also seeking adjustments. Let's get a reaction from industry. Joining us is Chief Executive of the Association of Ghana Industries, Chima Kwaba. And I'm happy I have you on the program this afternoon. I was just reading an article this morning where the AGI was 
um, asking for discounts on import of raw materials at a recent workshop you had. Now you have to think of tariffs potentially going up. I can imagine industry is not enthused at all. Well, your imagination is right. Um, industries, just like anybody else, are going through serious challenges. Cost of production is rising by the day. Mm. And uh, the fleets of uh, cost of feet of raw materials into the country. You know, most of our industries also import raw materials and it's becoming more and more expensive. So production cost is going up. Prices cannot increase proportionately because when you do so, you lose market share. And especially when you have imports also competing with you in your own market, in your own turf, then it makes it more challenging. So yes, mm. yes these are challenging times. So the PRC is expected to hold engagements tomorrow. Um, does the Commission usually seek input from the AGI? Uh, what would be your expectation? Well, the AGI constantly engages the Commission, especially when it comes to major tariff reviews. And that they do quite well on that. Mm. So they have actually extended invitation to us. So we look forward to meeting them to discuss the issues. We, we are aware of a number of things. We know the determinants of, of uh, or the factors that go to determine the tariff levels, the exchange rates, the uh, international oil prices, the energy mix. Those are the factors that normally are taken into account for a review. So we expect that uh, if changes are happening in these um, areas, then possibly there may be a review. However, we are also mindful of the fact that industry has been complaining uh, seriously about the issue of cross subsidy. Mm. Where industries are being made to subsidize residential users of tariffs of, of electricity. Already, we are one of the high tariff countries uh, when it comes to electricity. So, if you want to make your industries competitive, then you are mindful of the fact that you need to really protect industries by making the costs uh, competitive. So I, I believe in our meeting with them, all these factors will be taken into account and then we come to uh, a reasonable conclusion for all of us. Mr. Kwabu, I want you to listen to a chief policy analyst with the Ghana Institute of Public Policy Options, uh, Dr. Charles Rekubobe, who is saying the adjustments are justified and the ECG deserves even more. Tariff increases are necessary because of the fact that um, the pricing of tariffs is supposed to follow the same automatic formula as uh, we do with petrol. You know, the 15-day reviews, I think tariff was three months. But unfortunately, apart from the major tariff review of 2019, we haven't actually been doing the automatic adjustment. So the little drops that could have come every two or three months has now become a very much. If you want to have power in your house, you, you, be, you must be prepared to pay for it. I always used to get into trouble for saying that if you think power is expensive, try trying uh, putting um, candles or kerosene to light up your home. You find that it's far more expensive, it's far more unreliable, it's dirtier, etc., etc. So. Uh, the thing to do is that if you want power, pay for it. But what the consumer can do is that they can use the power more efficiently. And while I guess we all agree that ECG needs uh, the money so that we can get reliable power, I, uh, but the point is that most people are concerned about the rate of increment, which is 148%, which is a proposal. Hopefully the PRC would get them to beat that down. In terms of the margin of increase, uh, what does the AGI have to say about that? Speculate on the margin of increase. I think what the 148 is just a proposal from the ECG, mm. and therefore we cannot comment on that. We need to go into the numbers and see what is informing the 148 proposed. And, and it does not mean that if they propose 148, they will get 148. Because several factors will also be taken into account. We are mindful of the fact that ECG must be supported to provide efficient and reliable service uh, in the form of electricity to industries. And therefore, we have sympathy when, uh, for them when they are unable to recover 
the, uh, the, uh, the uh, electricity generated to provide the kind of service we need. So occasional adjustments, uh, sometimes unavoidable, especially to look at the parameters. But the extent of adjustment always have to be looked at. And then also taking account of the fact that uh, we always ask for actual cost of service to industry. Mm. If your cost of serving me electricity costs me X, that is what I should pay for. I cannot pay the X plus some other things which goes to subsidize residential users or other uh, users which are not relevant to industry. When you do that, you make industries uncompetitive. So we, coming from the background of cost subsidy, I believe that if we remove the cost subsidies, and then uh, you are even adjusting, you come to a point where you notice that the actual increment to industry may not be that high. Besides, there are also categories of customers. Industries belong to a particular category. So when we look at the numbers, we will know what kind of adjustments is being requested for our category of customers, that's the industries. So when we look at the numbers, we'll be able to make a, a determination. But on the whole, I think the 148, I mean, it's too high for industry. I don't think that that can be possible for industry. I will look into the numbers and then we come to a certain conclusion. Especially in the wake of after and the, the fact that we want industries to be more competitive here on the continent. I just want to pick your thoughts, though. Uh, should there be an increase? How is that going to impact industry? The point is that already, Ghana belongs to the high tariff countries, high electricity tariff countries. If you go to Ethiopia, energy is being sold at about 5 cents per kilowatt hour. In Ghana, we are doing about 15 cents. So when you already have high tariff levels, and then you continue to adjust and increase, the tendency is that you make your tariff levels too expensive for your industries. And when they become so expensive, it means that your input cost is becoming higher, your cost of production is growing, and you must sell at a higher price to stay in business. Selling at a higher price means that you are being uncompetitive in the market. And especially as you rightly mentioned, we are talking of after continental free trade agreement. You are opening your doors for goods to come from everywhere in Africa due to free quota free. You also want to be able to export. If your prices are high, you just cannot export. So these considerations are critical. And therefore, it is important that in our adjustments, we take all these factors into account but as I mentioned, we want our utility companies to stay in business. Because if they are not in business, they can't provide the energy that we need. So in order to, for them to stay in business, some adjustment sometimes is necessary. But let's also take account of all the other factors that I mentioned, the cross subsidy and all that. Perhaps if we do it, um, we probably wouldn't need to adjust so much for, in, the, in respect of um, industries. It could even possibly do to a, lead to a reduction. But let's look at the numbers. The point is, as you really made, we want to have competitive thriving industries in order to participate in AFTA and also export. And the competitiveness is, is energy is key. In some of the industries, if you take the steel industries, for example, energy could cost about 30% of their cost of production. Mm. When you do advance like that, you can imagine the impact on, the, on their business and, 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 and their prices. So we really need to look at this in a very dispassionate manner but at the same time, try to support our utility companies to survive and provide uh, efficient service. We will be closely monitoring the stakeholder engagement that is set to uh, take place uh, tomorrow. Uh, hopefully, we'll have a conversation after that. Thanks very much for your time uh, this afternoon. As uh, Chuma Kwabwa, he's chief executive of the Association of Ghana Industries. Next, there's something mm -hmm. happening with uh, treasury bills we want to discuss. Um, investor appetite for buying government bills continues to decline. Government missed its target last month by 2.24 billion cities, a significant drop of 35%. Economists with Data Bank, Courage Buti here to explain. Uh, Courage, what's going on? Hi, good afternoon to your listeners. Yes, yeah, so um, over the last few weeks, uh, we've noticed um, quite significant shortfalls in uh, demand for T-bills on the market. It cuts across the 91-day to uh, the 364-day bills. And even last week, the government sought to refinance the two-year uh, note maturity, which had a face value of, I think, some two billion. And they did a double tranche of two-year and five-year tenors, which raised to together some 1.6 billion, which still fell short of the two-year maturity coming up. Uh, that is the general trend on the market, I believe, for the last um, eight to 10 weeks now. 
And the real driving factor has been the fact that um, the Bank of Ghana in March um, increased the policy rate by some 250 basis points, which was quite aggressive. But beside that, they also increased what you call the uh, re uh, required reserve ratio um, to 12% from 8%. Now, the combined effect of this is that um, liquidity levels on the interbank market is tightened. And, and they did it for a reason. Um, the history has shown that um, commercial bank lending to the private sector hasn't been great uh, for this COVID era and the periods after. And then um, with inflation climbing up and the Bank of Ghana's model would have suggested that um, inflation will be around the levels they are now, the real fear would have been that if we allow this liquidity to stay in the system and it's going, it will not go into the productive sectors also, it might go after consumption, which will prove inflationary. And the agenda has been to tighten inflation. So I believe that is what informed uh, the uh, tightening of the required reserve ratio to 12% in addition to the policy rate. What this has done is that banks are struggling or are trying to meet the liquidity requirement, regulatory requirement from the Bank of Ghana at the moment. And so the liquidities they have are being channeled into that. Some are even selling some of their T-bills and other investment to try to raise cash to meet the level of demand they meet daily. And so you would have seen shortfall in demand for GOG bills, which is where the excess cash that has been in the bank of uh, the banking system since the COVID era, I mean, has been going to into government bills and bonds. But uh, with yeah. the tightening, most of it now is being channeled into meeting the regulatory requirements of the PT levels. I mean, on a weekly basis, and so we are seeing shortfalls on the market. Another explanation will be that uh, uh, the inflation rate is now 19.4. And it could go up tomorrow. I mean, when there's a Ghana Study Cost of Springs, then the April infl inflation. Now, with inflation at 19.4, and as a close of uh, uh, the last auction, I think 91 day bill was doing something in the upper 17, 17.88%. It's so far, it's only the uh, 364 day bill that is returning around 20.3%. So you realize that real yields on these T-bills are in the negatives. And so the investors are channeling their energies into the bond market. So you can see some huge volumes right. of bond trading. And then you can see rates on the bond market going up to the 21, 22% levels. For uh, the last two year auction, it cleared at 21.5%. Okay. And then the five year at over 22%. And so those are more attractive now than holding T-bill. I believe that is why demand is continually falling short on the T-bill market. And it's interesting because uh, some time back, it, it was really lucrative to invest in T-bills. You hear people say, yes, buy those uh, T-bills. But now it doesn't appear to be so. What does this do to the economy, this decline? Well, the market is misaligned, and that is why it's, it's, it's uh, happening. So, so T-bills have their place. It fits the bill for short-term investments. Uh, at the moment, real returns are depressed. And so it doesn't look attractive, but it's a matter of time market rate to realign. And we need that for efficient functioning of the market and for a, a clear guidance for credit and all of that. The market rates need to be aligned. And so as it stands now, policy rate is 17%. Uh, the interbank rate is even higher than that policy rate of 17.5%. And T-bill rates are just around or just, I mean, not too far away from the policy rate now. So the market rate to eventually align, which is the reason why it will not be out of place when people call for the Bank of Ghana to increase the policy rate again. I know that would be influenced by more than just the inflation level and market rates being misaligned. But then there is a real call for that, so that you can have the policy play rate playing its role as a punitive rate, where if banks are not able to meet their liquidity levels, they go to the Bank of Ghana to borrow at that rate. But every other market rate must fall in place and there should be a removal of monetary dominance where the t rate to be above the policy rate to, um, um, to be below the policy rate so that it's not cheaper for the Bank of Ghana, a government to borrow from the Bank of Ghana. So all of these will be aligned over time. I think the anomaly in the market is due to the rate of jump in inflation we are seeing, which is driven largely by uh, the factors that are more uh, external, especially with energy prices and of course food prices. Mm which they do not have immediate handle on and they are structural in nature. So the solution is not immediate. 
But that is the goal of monetary policy to realign this market rate. And it's a matter of time that they'll get back to where they ought to be. So I guess the question on the minds of people watching right now is, Courage, if I have money right now, do you advise that I buy T-bills? Well, on the side of returns, it doesn't look like it, but there are other alternatives. I mean, you can look into investing in the one-year, two-year, three-year bonds, which are still treasury securities anyway, and they are still risk-free anyway. Uh, you can also look into some of the mutual funds, and my company off offers a number of those, the M fund and all of that, which has a combination of T-bills and bonds. And so your risk is kind of diversified, and you can be guaranteed of your principal and some returns over time. So yeah, there are options for investors beyond the T-bills that whose rates are depressed. You can look at the mutual funds, which actually blend T-bills and other instruments, and, and then you can safeguard some good return in the process. Yeah, and so you're saying this is going to just happen in the short term, right? And so with time... Ultimately, rate to correct. Ultimately, rate to correct. Because it's not normal for TB rate to be below inflation. And so it tells you that. And we've seen the trend that from 13.5% uh, from January, we are seeing TB rate now around 17.88%. So it tells you that things are taking their natural course and it will correct over time. And you will see the correction when inflation stabilizes. And we are reaching a period of June, July, where a base effect will start to pull inflation down. And at that point, you will see rates normalize on the market. All right. So we see things normalize. I guess I'll just keep my money and then uh, look at other things. Thanks very much. Courage with you uh, for your expert you analysis. You don't have to keep it. You don't have to keep it, yeah. <laughs> it, I mean, there are still good returns on the market anyway. Right. Um, that was just so a joke. You just don't want to box yourself into T bills. There are a lot of other interesting stuff. Talk to you, a data bank, talk to any investment house, and we'll guide you in that process. Thank Thanks you. Thanks very much. Uh, we've got to go. That's the marketplace. More news on our website, myjoinline.com forward slash business. You have the day's latest stories there. There you go. Thanks for watching and have a good rest of the day.